everybody, I'm Yvette of Uniquely Yvette. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. This is going to be a beginner video for using the scroll saw. And I hope I'll be able to share information for you to get started if you haven't already. How to use it, how to put your blade in, and all those things. <laughs> the project we're going to make to demonstrate how to use the machine is going to be extremely simple easy for anybody to do getting started if you are an advanced user this probably isn't this video for you you could just look for inspiration on my channel as some of the other videos i've made without further ado let's get into this thing <laughs> okay y'all this is my dewalt brand scroll saw i think i ordered this stand separately from the machine this is the machine here this yellow part here up to this part the only putting together i had to do was i think putting this piece on here and then of course i screwed it all down to the stand the blades go in here you control the tightness from this button here the power to turn it on the speed at which the blade runs is here to loosen and get the blade out first you take the tension off like that so it makes it loose see before it was tight you saw me pluck it but now it's loose and i turn this button to release the top and then underneath there's another button here to release the bottom of the blade and you can just pull it completely out and here's the blade very thin this right here is a blower so it'll constantly when the machine is on it'll constantly blow the sawdust away so you can keep keep everything clear so you can see what you're cutting this particular machine i think was a little bit more expensive than the first one i bought the first scroll saw i bought was kind of cheap i bought it from lowe's well cheap ish relatively it was cheap it was like 170 dollars, i think this one is closer to 500 i think think i'll double check i'll leave a link to this machine and probably the first machine i had in the description below you know i found that the first machine i had worked very very well it had a lot of vibration but when i got this i couldn't appreciate not having that level of vibration until i got this machine so but the first one worked perfectly well and actually i sold it on Facebook marketplace to a guy who just wanted to buy one for his son to get started using a scroll saw and so it was perfectly usable I could have continued to use it anyway let me show you how to put the blade in actually before we put the blade in I want to talk about the kinds of blades that it uses now my first machine had pins in the ends of the blades that's the kind of blades it took and I will show a picture on the screen of what that looked like because I don't think I have any more of them. But this one takes, um, this machine takes blades without a pen in the end. At first I didn't prefer it because I was used to the pens and I thought it was easier to, I thought it was easier to put the blades in the machine. I think probably it still is. I don't know. It's still probably in my opinion easier but whatever the case may be i like what i have now now the the blades i use all the time are these olsen skip tooth blades there are there are a ton of different kinds of blades i don't know all the information about those so but what i do know will get you started and will be fine so like i said i use these olsen skip tooth blades most of the time i use this number five and it has 12.5 teeth Per inch that's what the 12.5 TPI means so I use the number five and my understanding is that the more teeth per inch that the blade has the smoother the cut will be but you also have to take into account that depending on the blade you use is how thick a piece of wood you can cut this packet says that these blades can cut thickness of wood from 3 30 seconds of an inch to a half inch thick. I usually cut quarter inch plywood. 
So a half inch would be, of course, twice that thickness. But I've cut even, I think just now I've cut over an inch thick. I just, with this blade, which is I think a number five, or it could be one, a number seven. I'm not sure which I took out of this packet. But I just now cut a piece of wood very carefully and slowly that was over a, an inch thick. I'll show you. That is, that's got to be more than an inch in thickness. I just took my time. But the thing about it is when you cut thick pieces of wood, you're going to dull your blade very quickly. But these are disposable blades. They're not for you to just keep using one blade over and over forever. I mean, they're going to dull. You're going to work harder to get through your material. In addition to having pinless blades, you have your standard blades where you use to cut your material going forward. Or you can have these spiral blades, which are a little different. I'll show you what I mean when I cut a piece of wood. Normally you would have to twist your wood back and forth as you're cutting all around whatever shape you're making. But with these spiral blades, you don't have to do all that twisting. I'll show you the blades close up. The regular blade has spikes on the front and the back is smooth. When you run your fingers down over the teeth, it's smooth. But when you come up, you feel that kind of rougher feeling. But with the spiral blade, it's just rough all the way around. <laughs> Actually, this is kind of, you don't want to be rubbing your fingers up and down this deal. It's a little bit wacky using this. It's it, You need a lot more control and patience on what you're doing. And I don't have that kind of patience. I don't want to feel fool with all that. Plus, I think the spiral blades cut rougher and cause you have to do more sanding of your final material. I don't want to fool with all that. So I just stick with the regular blades. Okay, let's learn how to put the blade into the machine. To know which way is up with this blade, you want to, when you run your finger down, it should be smooth. That way you know you've got it right side up. If for some reason you got it, you have it upside down and you run your finger down and it feels rough, you know you have it upside down. So you want the blade, the teeth to be smooth when you run your finger down and rough when you come up. You also want your teeth to be facing you and the smooth back of the blade to be facing away from you. Okay. Now what I like to do with this machine is to secure the bottom of the blade first and then the top. First at the top of this machine, I want to make sure I have this setting over here this pushed all the way over because the more I push it over here, the tighter it'll make the blade. But you want to start off with it pushed all the way to the right. That will loosen things. Now, sometimes this might be raised up. So I want to push it down to give as much space for my blade as possible. Now this, I don't use this very often. I just set it to wherever I want it. This is where you do the speed can you see the numbers anyway here's the numbers for speed and you just twist that for speed i just leave it somewhere in the middle this is the on and off switch let's go under here and try to show you how to put the blade in from the bottom okay making sure that you have your your teeth of your blade facing you and the smooth feel against your fingertips going down you tuck the blade down between this little gap here i hope you can see that there's a gap right here in the front here's the tighter button but in the front of it you push you make sure that's loose and push the little blade in between you want to have just enough of the blade in between there to, to be caught when you tighten the button but not so much that the top of your blade doesn't can't reach that spot where it needs to be tightened at the top they they actually don't spare you much so you have to just grip just enough you don't want it so far down that like you don't want it down like where you can see your blade down here that's way too far you want it way on up be, and you'll be able to see whether it's enough to be caught at the top. 
So just enough to be cut. And then you twist the button away from you to tighten. There, so now it's in there. If you press this way, you'll feel that, yeah, it's cut. Sometimes it won't catch you. You have to untwist this and then do it again. But it should go in somewhat easily. It's a little challenging when you first do it because you don't feel very confident. Let's move up to securing the top. Okay, now you see that you have so little of the blade available to go between this gap. And that's why I say you want to have as little as possible at the bottom so you have enough for the top. Funny enough, it still holds when you when you tighten everything in. You think, how is it even holding on such a tiny little space? But it works. So you push that in between this gap, twist away from you to tighten and pull. It's in there. You see that it's still loose, but it is secure here and it's secure here. In order to tighten it, you come back to here, and I like to take it to about a notch between the two and the three, and that will tighten it. But there should be a ping. Now, I don't know if that's the right note for the ping. Sometimes people say, oh, it's too tight. It's too loose. I don't know, but I, for my machine, I like to go right there. Every now and then when I feel like it's just feeling tight, I go to the two, but that's where I go. Obviously, you could go up there, but I never do. But that's where I like my ping. It's pretty tight. Now it's time for us to think about cutting a piece of wood. I just want to demonstrate how it would work. You don't have to be afraid of this blade. A lot of times people are afraid to use tools in the workshop because they're scared they're going to have an injury and cut their hand off. One thing I can say about this machine, the scroll saw, it is extremely, extremely safe as far as that i mean you want to wear safety goggles because that's what you want to wear anyway but i've broken a lot of blades and none of the blades have just popped out and hit me or anything they just break and they're still stuck in there just broken in two pieces they, they've never come out of there but you'll see people cutting with their fingers very close to the blade to me that is it's just not a big deal because I'm not sure if it's because of how it's designed. Maybe it's cutting away from you as you're pushing forward. I don't know. But the most injury you would receive if you were to hit this blade is a, a little slash or cut on your finger. I have never cut my finger on this. Never. <laughs> but And I'm always up on it. It's just not that violent. It's just not that hard to use it doesn't shake that severely it's not like when say you're using a miter saw where you might if you slip in there your fingers coming off on the miter saw which you shouldn't be having your fingers that close anyway but it's just not like that oh another thing with the miter saw i have cut little pieces of wood and the wood flings across the room if that was flinging toward me, you know, you'd be injured. That's never happened with this. It just, it just isn't that serious. So it's, it's nothing to be afraid of. I do wear uh, ear protection because it's a little noisy, but it's really not that noisy. And I'll let you hear it come on without dulling the sound first. And then as we cut, then I will dull the sound. So now I'm going to de demonstrate the direction that you would cut when you're cutting with the scroll saw. And that is the sound of my scroll saw. I don't know if that's loud to you. I haven't dulled it. That's the sound. Now, that's the sound when it comes on, but let me let you hear the sound when I start cutting. That's as loud as it gets. So for demonstration purposes, let's say I wanted to cut, let's say, all right, let's say I want to cut this teardrop shape. Now with an average blade, with the regular normal standard blade, I would push this piece in, follow this line all the way around, and I would have to basically turn this piece 360 until I reach back up to the top. 
with a spiral blade, which is what I showed you earlier, I wouldn't turn it, I wouldn't turn this piece like this. I would simply go forward like this. Like that. I wouldn't turn it. But it seems to be, it seems to cut a little rougher and it feels, to me, it feels like I'm in less control. It's just weird. I don't know how to explain it. But let me demonstrate how I would cut this shape with my standard blade. That's how it is. You see how I turned it around in a full, as I followed the shape of the drawing, I turned the wood completely around. Normally, whoever would be teaching you how to do this, they would teach you to be just outside the pencil line that I made. I have a bad habit of cutting directly on top of my lines. So you can either follow my bad habit or do it right. <laughs> there may come a time when you need to cut a an inside part of your design like this letter b you saw how we put the blade into the scroll saw and you would ruin your project if you ran your piece up into the blade and it cut through it would cut straight through and basically cut the back of your b off you could only do the outside parts of your b the way the blade is done so in order to get those inside parts of the letter, you would need to have a hole here. So in this instance, what you would do is cut a hole with your power drill right here in the holes where in the center here for the B and here for this hole in the B and this hole in the B. Oh, this bit only needs to be big enough to make a hole that you can fit your scroll saw blade in and actually this is a little big so i'm going to go smaller it only needs to be big enough the hole only needs to be big enough for you to squeeze not squeeze but to run your scroll saw blade into i don't like to struggle to get my scroll saw blade through the hole i'm making it smaller because i don't want this hole to touch the sides of my letter B and mess it, mess it up. It's better to use your scroll saw blade to make your hole neater. You'll make all your holes with your power drill before you move to a scroll saw. So there you go. Now all you do is you loosen this, as I showed you earlier. You loosen only the top. So now, now with the blade loosened at the top, I find the hole and run the blade in can you see that and then reattach it inside so then i lock it in and then tighten it make sure i have my ping oh sounds a little funny there we go make sure i have my ping and we're set to cut the inside of the holes out Cutting an inside hole when it's small can be a little challenging. It seems more difficult than it is, but you just basically have to take your time. And when you first start cutting that hole, it feels like you're doing everything wrong, but you just keep working at it and it'll get, it'll get more defined. So now I'm going to put it, put the blade in the other hole. And if you can't get your blade in there you could just always take the entire blade out from the bottom and top and thread it through that way and there you go 
So now after you have the inside cuts done, you cut out the outside. A lot of times when I'm cutting something, if you want, you could go all the way around here, go in and then turn around and come out. But I find it when you're first starting, it's a little challenging to feel like you can just stop moving and twist the machine some way like this without moving the blade. Sometimes it's a little challenging to do that when you first start. So what I like to do is just go straight across here and keep going. Then go back with the little B in my hand and then cut in, cut out that little indention. I'll show you what I mean. So now you have your B cut out and you still have this part on there. But I think it's easier to have that, this in your hand and then go in and then go in like that when you're first starting and, you know, whenever it, the mood strikes me to do it that way. So let's do it. See, and you don't have to be afraid that somehow you're so close to the blade you're going to hurt yourself. Personally, one of the safest tools to use in the workshop is the scroll saw. I mean, it's just, it's just not that serious, <laughs> in my opinion. But I'm not responsible for what you do, so just so you know, okay? So there's your little B. You could go with something this small or something this big, <laughs> you know? That's up to you. You could do anything with the scroll saw. The scroll saw is amazing. I mean, look at this little bat that I cut out and this gigantic bee. The ghost with his eyes, the little bats, the body of this spider. All right, y'all, before we move on to doing some shapes on our scroll saw for our simple project, I'm going to try to roughen up this piece of wood I have here to make the base of the project. What would work better is if I had a piece of driftwood, but I don't live where I would come across anything like that. So I'm going to just roughen up this piece, hopefully make it look rough enough to look like it could be <laughs> a piece of driftwood. I'm going to be using my rotary tool with this, um, this little burr in it. I don't know what this burr is called. I don't know if you can see that, but I'll leave a link to it below. If you happen to have a rotary tool, you could do this with a chisel by hand, but I don't even know how to, what I'm doing. So, you know, I'm just going to see what happens with this. <laughs> I tried to roughen up this piece of wood the best I could. It still looks a little too manufactured to me, but I'm going to just let it go. And then I sanded it smooth. So, you know, basically I wouldn't cut my fingers on it. <laughs> or rather, so I wouldn't get splinters once I started working with it. Now I'm going to stain it with this dark walnut stain. And then I'm going to, after, the, after that dries, I'm going to use some watered down white paint on it to try to give it a weathered look. First things first is to stain it. I have a few pieces of scrap wood here, a piece of carbon paper and some templates for fish and these are some kind of funky looking waves here <laughs> i hope they'll look fine once we get them made i think i'm going to trace the waves on this thicker pieces of wood perhaps we'll see how that works out and then on these thinner pieces i'm going to do the fish i only need a, like five fish i think but anyway i'm going to trace them on here I think this is maybe a half inch thick piece of wood. Might be less, it's, it's definitely more than a quarter inch thick. But I'm going to trace these on here. And then after we get them traced, we will, we will cut them out on the scroll saw. And this will be the simplistic 
project that I said we would make in this beginner video and hope you don't think it's too simplistic. The, the skill for using the equipment is just not that complicated. So really you could go, you could go right to buying your machine and make something far more complicated than this project right from day one. All it requires is that you just take your time when you're making the cuts. That's all. And if you're using scrap wood, I mean, you know, does it really matter if you mess it up? Okay, here are all the pieces traced out. Here are the waves. Is this like uh, five pieces of waves? I don't know if they will all fit because of the thickness of this piece of this wood. Here are the fish, five fish. Here is the piece all dry now after I whitewashed it. It actually dried with more of the brown showing, weirdly enough, but I'm going to sand it a little bit, see what I think it will um after that. Well, I think that's the best I can do. So let's move on. Okay, I've sanded the waves and the fish as much as I am going to. I don't over sand because of hand issues but of course if you did anything you can sand as much as you want to everything is perfectly smooth i just want you to keep that in mind i don't go to those those lengths to save my hands okay so what i'm going to do is use my rotary tool to put a little bit of texture in a few of these fish maybe some scales or something just to liven them up a little bit before we move to the painting process Okay, y'all, here we are. All of the all of the waves are done. I mean, they're painted their first color. I'm going to do some more. And then we have, I didn't show, but I have all of the fish painted. I got a little crazy with the colors. <laughs> I showed you two of them, I think, these two. And then I, so I just threw in a couple of these. This one's pretty subtle. You can't really see. But it's there. And this little guy looks pretty cute. They look cute, but I feel like they're a little busy. You know, all together, everything is a little busy. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush some white on the top parts of these waves. I'm not going to try to make it perfect and all that kind of stuff as far as where the white should be and shouldn't be and all that nonsense. I'm just going to dry brush it on there. Hope for the best.
one actually looks. I like this better than what I did on hair. So just pretend it looks better. <laughs> so now I'm going to be gluing the waves onto the base. And hope it's going to work right. It's too bad you can't really see more of the blue in the back. As far as those lines, because I think the lines over there turned out better from neater. I guess I could flip it around, but whatever. I'm going to be using these this floral wire to um, to attach to the fish and then attach to the base. Okay, so I'll put a hole in the bottom of this one. If you can see right there, and I also put a hole. Oh, you can't see. But anyway, there's a hole right here. Can you see that hole? I put a hole in there, so, and I cut about two inches, two and a half inches of this wire. And I'm just, I'm going to try gluing it, but first I want to position them. So I put the hole deep enough to just stay on there. And the good thing is, when this gets wonky, when I put it in, I can position it because it's a wire. There, see that? Okay, I'm, I want to glue these, but I'm not going to glue them while I'm showing you. So I'll just put them on here in position, and then you can see what we're doing here. And if you decide to make this, do all your gluing. That is the simple project you can make with your scroll saw. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a comment below and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.